Bhakti Bhavati Nice to Ki. By regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure Loti, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed. A loving service unto the personality of Godhead, who is praised with transcendental songs, is established as an irrevocable effect. Yeah. Yeah. Only we can do that. Yes. <clears throat> so, by reading from uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 2, which is entitled The Lord in the Heart, Verse 35. Bhagavan, Bhagavan, Sarva, Sarva, Bhuteshu, Bhuteshu, Bhagavan, Sarva, Bhuteshu, Bhagavan, Sarva, Bhuteshu, Lakshita, Lakshita, Swatmana, Swatmana, Hari, Hari, Lakshita, Swatmana, Hari, Lakshita, Swatmana, Hari, Drishyayar, Drishyayar, Bhuti, Bhuti, Drashta, Drashta, Drishaya Budiadi, Beer Drashta, Drishaya Budi, Beer Drashta. When you have a wire and four vowels, it runs together. So, Budiya, like that, Budiya. So, Drishaya Budiadi, Beer Drashta, Drishaya Budiadi, Beer Drashta, Lakshanaya, Lakshanaya. Anuma Pakai, Anuma Pakai, Lakshanar Anuma Pakai, Lakshanar Anuma Pakai. Sorry about the way I wrote it. Sounds like a Malaysian word. Sounds like a Malaysian word. Bhagavan Sava Bhuteshu, Bhagavan Sava Bhuteshu, Lakshita Swatmana Hari, Lakshita Swatmana Hari. Drishyar Budiya Di Beer Drashta Drishyar Budiya Di Beer Drashta Lakshanar Anuma Pakai Lakshanar Anuma Pakai Bhagavan Sava Bhuteshu Lakshita Swatmana Hari Lakshita Swatmana Hari Drishyar Budiya Di Beer Drashta did I remember the line over the Adi Beer, the line on the first day? Where did it go? And it just was. Oh, come on. I have to do is just touch a phone and it's easier to read, but mm, easier for my eyes. Okay. So it's just to share booty adi beer drush time. Remember that? Did I put that long A? Yeah. Line? Okay. Lakshanaya Anuma Pakai. Lakshanaya Anuma Pakai. Is that three times or two? Two, three? Okay. That's three. Okay. This is right. All eyes are fine. Oh, okay. Bhagavan Sarva Bhutasya. Bhagavan Sarva Bhutasya. Lakshin. Lakshita Swat Mana Hari Lakshita Swat Mana Hari Disha Dudia Ad Bir Dishta Disha Rudia Dibir Rasta Lakshanai Anu Mak Pikai Lakshanai Anu Mak Pikai Bhagavan Sarva Bhuteshu Bhagavan Sarva Bhuteshu Lakshita Swatmana Hare Lakshita Swatmana Hare Shai Budi you don't say it's too hard to read it. Mm -hmm. So nobody else can do it? Some Bhagavan. Bhagavan. Sarva. Oh, wait a minute. This word means, okay. The personality of Godhead. The personality of Godhead. Sarva. Sarva. Oh. Bhuteshu. Bhuteshu. The living entities. In the living entities. Oh, in the living entities. 
Lakshitaha is visible. Is visible. Swaatmana, along with the self. Along with the self. Hari, Hari, the Lord. The Lord. Drishyai, Drishyai, by what is seen. By what is seen. Buddhi Adi B. Buddhi Adi B. By intelligence. By intelligence. Drashta, Drashta, one who sees. One who sees. Bakshanai, Bakshanai, by different signs. By different signs. Anumapakai, Anumapakai, by hypothesis. By hypothesis. Okay. Translation and purport by divine grace and Sivakaranta Swami Shilapapa. Jai Shilapapa. The personality of God at Lord Sri Krishna is in every living being along with the individual soul. And this fact is perceived and hypothesized in our acts of seeing and taking help from the intelligence. <clears throat> so please repeat. The personality of God at Lord Sri Krishna. The personality of God at Lord Sri Krishna. Is in every living being. Is in every living being. Along with the individual soul. Along with the individual soul. And this fact is perceived and hypothesized. And this fact is perceived and hypothesized. In our acts of seeing. In our acts of seeing. And taking help. And taking help from the intelligence. From the intelligence. The general argument of the common man is that since the Lord is not visible to our eyes, how can one either surrender unto him or render transcendental loving service unto him? To such a common man, here is a practical suggestion given by Srila Shukadeva Goswami as to how one can perceive the Supreme Lord by reason and perception. Actually, the Lord is not perceivable by our present materialized senses. But when one is convinced of the presence of the Lord by a practical service attitude, there is a revelation by the Lord's mercy. And such a pure devotee of the Lord can perceive the Lord's presence always and everywhere. He can perceive that intelligence is the form direction of the Paramatma primary portion of the personality of Godhead. The presence of Paramatma in everyone's company is not very difficult to realize even for the common man. The procedure is as follows. One can perceive one's self-identification and feel positively that he exists. He may not feel it very abruptly, but by using a little intelligence, he can feel that he is not the body. He can feel that the hand, the leg, the head, the hair, and the limbs are all his bodily parts and parcels, but as such, the hand, the leg, the head, etc., cannot be identified with his self. Therefore, just by using intelligence, he can distinguish and separate his self from other things that he sees. So the natural conclusion is that the living being, either man or beast, is the seer, and he sees besides himself all other things. So there's a difference between the seer and the seeing. Now, by little use of intelligence, we can also readily agree that the living being who sees the things beyond himself by ordinary vision has no power to see or to move independently. All our ordinary actions and perceptions depend on various forms of energy supplied to us by nature in various combinations. Our senses of perception and of action, that is to say, our five perceptive senses of one, hearing, two, touch, three, sight, four, taste, and five, smell, as well as our five senses of action, namely, one, hands, two, legs, three, speech, four, evacuation organs, and five, reproductive organs. And also our three subtle senses, namely, one, mind, two, intelligence, and three, ego, parentheses, 13 senses in all, and parentheses, are supplied to us by various arrangements of gross and subtle forms of natural energy. And the one sentence, but all our senses are just made of natural, of, of material nature. If we're different from them, then we're not our senses. And it is equally evident that our objects of perception are nothing but the products of the inexhaustible permutations and combinations of the forms taken by natural energy. 
as this conclusively proves that the ordinary living being has no independent power of perception or of motion, and as we undoubtedly feel our existence being conditioned by nature's energy, we conclude that he who sees is spirit, and that the senses as well as the objects of perception are material. The spiritual quality of the seer is manifest in our dissatisfaction with the limited state of materially conditioned existence. That is the difference between spirit and matter. There are some less intelligent arguments that matter develops the power of seeing and moving as a certain organic development. But such an argument cannot be accepted because there's no experimental evidence that matter has anywhere produced a living entity. Trust no future, however pleasant. Idle talks regarding future development of matter into spirit are actually foolish because no matter has ever developed the power of seeing or moving in any part of the world. Therefore, it is definite that matter and spirit are two different entities. And this conclusion is arrived at by the use of intelligence. Now we come to the point that the things which are seen by a little use of intelligence cannot be animate unless we accept someone as the user of or director of the intelligence. Intelligence gives one direction, like some higher authority, and the living being cannot see or move or eat to do anything without the use of intelligence. When one fails to take advantage of intelligence, he becomes a deranged man. And so a living being is dependent on intelligence or the direction of a superior being. Such intelligence is all pervading. Every living being has his intelligence, and this intelligence, being the direction of some higher authority, is just like a father giving direction to his son. The higher authority, who is present and residing within every individual living being, is the super self. At this point in our investigation, we may consider the following question. On the one hand, we realize that all our perceptions and activities are conditioned by arrangements of material nature. Yet, we also ordinarily feel and say, I am perceiving or I am doing. Therefore, we can say that our material senses of perception and action are moving because we are identifying the self with the material body. And that the superior principle of super self is guiding and supplying us according to our desire. By taking advantage of the guidance of super-self in the form of intelligence, we can either continue to study and to put into practice our conclusion that I am not this body, or we can choose to remain in the false material identification, fancying ourselves to be the possessors and doers. Our freedom consists in orienting our desire either toward the ignorant material misconception or the true spiritual conception. Isn't that interesting? That's our freedom. We can easily attain to the true spiritual conception by recognizing the super self, Paramatma, to be our friend and guide, and by dovetailing our intelligence with the superior intelligence of Paramatma. The super self and the individual self are both spirit, and therefore the super self and the individual self are both qualitatively one and distinct from matter. But the super self and the individual self cannot be on an equal level because the super self gives direction or supplies intelligence and the individual self follows the direction and thus actions are performed properly. The individual is completely dependent on the direction of the super self because in every step the individual self follows the direction of the super self in the matter of seeing, hearing, thinking, feeling, willing, etc. So far as common sense is concerned, we come to the conclusion that there are three identities, namely matter, spirit, and super-spirit. Now if we go to the Bhagavad Gita or the Vedic intelligence, we can further understand that all three identities, namely matter, individual spirit, and the super-spirit, are all dependent on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The super-self is a partial representation or plenary portion of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Bhagavad Gita affirms that the Supreme Personality of Godhead dominates all of the material world by his partial representation only. God is great, and he cannot be simply an order supplier of the individual selves. 
Therefore, the super self cannot be a full representation of the supreme self, Purushottama, the absolute personality of Godhead. Can I follow that sentence? No, no. God is great and he cannot be simply, simply meaning only, an order supplier of the individual selves. Therefore, the super self cannot be a full representation of the supreme self, Purushottama, the absolute personality of Godhead. Realization of the super self by the individual self is the beginning of self realization. And by the process of such self realization, one is able to realize the Supreme Personality of Godhead by intelligence, by the help of authorized scriptures, and principally by the grace of the Lord. The Bhagavad Gita is the preliminary conception of the Personality of Godhead Sri Krishna, and the Srimad Bhagavatam is the further explanation of the science of Godhead. So if we stick to our determination and pray for the mercy of the director of intelligence sitting within the same bodily tree, like a bird sitting with another bird, as explained in the Upanishads, certainly the purport of the revealed information in the Vedas becomes clear to our vision. And there's no difficulty in realizing the Supreme Personality of God at Vasudev. The intelligent man, therefore, after many births of such use of intelligence, surrenders himself at the lotus feet of Vasudev, as confirmed by the Bhagavad Gita 719. Which is what you read now. After many births and deaths, he who is actually in knowledge surrenders unto me, knowing me to be the cause of all causes and all it is. Such a great soul is very real. Sounds different when I have this up. Could you all hear me all right? Yeah. That was a very long purport. Um, it, if we study that purport, it's like a guide for preaching. So first of all, we can demonstrate there is a soul that's different from the body. We can demonstrate the senses are all made up of the body. And therefore, we're totally dependent on this body, which we can't, we can point out that we can't make the hair grow or the stomach digest. We don't know how to do that. It's happening anyways. And so, uh, we don't know how to, we don't know how our senses work, but they work. So we're dependent on this material energy, and we are different from it. There's that thing that they, they do with kids sometimes, or new brand new people, somebody say they play this game, the devotees will play this game. We say point to your hand, point to your head, point to your point to your 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 all the time, what you own, your your stomach, your chest, your heart, your hair, your you know, etc. And then you say point to yourself, and then they go like that because uh, that seems to be that we're pointing to my heart, I own it, or pointing to my so they can't, so they understand that the self is different from the body, which is like practical um, proof that we instinctively understand this. I should try that on my action. Yeah, <laughs> try it. So, um, so we can, we can, this is like the thought process, it's like a game, but because the same thought process that he's describing here, in this one purport, he describes the entire thought process that, if you follow through, will lead you to Krishna. So, so, um, or lead you to knowing that there should be a Krishna, there should be someone. So then by that time you say, well, okay, well, how is this all working? And what is this intelligence? I don't know what to do, but somehow intelligence is there. And uh, why do I have intelligence? What does that mean? So this verse said that you can perceive, because you have intelligence, that there's a guide of your intelligence. So if we are willing to be not puffed up and say, actually, I don't really know where the intelligence comes from. So somehow we have intelligence to discriminate. So the super soul here is, is said to be, Prabhupada says that the super soul is the form, no, no, I always start saying that sentence wrong. Intelligence is the form direction of super soul. So intelligence is listed in Bhagavad Gita, um, in chapter seven, as a material element, yeah, which seems strange because we can't see it, can't feel it, but 
the three solid material elements that are there. We know very well there's mind also because it's very busy and we can see how busy mind is, but we can't see what mind is. And say, so, well, I, you know, I guess um, sometimes people say they can see an aura or sometimes psychic people say they can see the mind. I don't really know what they're seeing, sort of maybe an energy field. I don't know if anybody can really see the mind, but um, maybe some people can. I don't know, but generally speaking, we can't see the mind. But we know it's there. We know it's busy. We see the evidence in other people, and sometimes it's good evidence, sometimes it's bad evidence. And we see, uh, we see, uh, we, we know ourselves are busy thinking all the time. And what we say, we say, I'm thinking, I'm, I change my mind. I, what? I change my mind. Who's I? If I change my mind. So we, we can get a glimpse of maybe there's something besides mine. Maybe we're not really our mind. So. Um, we, we can you know, also because mind changes and we're always observing that the same observer within observed our thoughts as, on our first day of kindergarten as our thoughts this morning. Same observer, right? I observe myself thinking, I once observed myself thinking kindergarten thoughts going to school on my first day. And now I observe myself thinking thoughts of an older person. So, um, we can, but I'm the same observer. I haven't changed. I'm, I'm observing all these things. So that's the soul. So we can figure out that this soul is different from the body, even from the subtle body. We can, we can see this. You know, we can figure it out. We can explain it to people. Because once we, we understand this process of thought, and then we have to go further because we can, sometimes we can take people this far, but then, okay, what about super soul? Okay, where does intelligence come from? It comes from super soul guiding. Because sometimes we don't know the right thing, but then there's some superior idea, and then we know the right thing. And that's intelligence. And intelligence is shaped by super soul guiding us. We don't know how to hear super soul. If we were pure devotees, we could hear super soul talking. But because we're so conditioned, we're used to listening only to material things, some of the gross material things. So we're totally accustomed to that. So super soul shapes this material substance called intelligence. And, and by then we get the idea. Of course, we tend to mix it with mind and so on, but um, that's where we go wrong. But our uh, mind is busy thinking, feeling, and willing. And so mind is so busy, so mind may take this guidance and let me do something with it to, to my liking. So this happens but, but by, by education, by intelligence being given to us in a in a organized form through education and by the guidance of the spiritual master and the scriptures, then we have a better chance of hearing through our intelligence because we have a guide of how to discern, you know, what's the real thing. And uh, so our intelligence should be in agreement with, uh, with the uh, scripture and the spiritual master like that. So it helps. But the super soul is always shaped, always doing that. And in fact, the animals also have soul body. Because wherever the soul goes, the subtle body goes, and the subtle body is made of mind, intelligence, and false ego. So, you know, the false ego changes into an idea that I'm the animal body, and uh, mind is limited by a smaller computer, and it's all about what pertains to that kind of animal body, and uh, intelligence is still there guiding. Food might be over there. You know, your resting place might be over here. Watch out for that danger over there. So the guidance is there from super soul. No matter what, but there's, you know, in your different bodies, you have different ability to pick it up. And the guidance is going to be about different things, but it's there. So in the human body, the guidance can be about higher moral standards and finally about spiritual life. So um, uh, then it could go even higher. Okay, so there is a superior intelligence within me guiding me. It has come from somewhere. And it comes from some guy, some friend in my heart. Okay, you can go even further. Because that, what is the source? of this person in my heart that everybody seems to have. And where is the comfort zone we can, but then we really need to help the spiritual, uh, uh, spiritual master and the, and the scriptures to, to go that high and understand that behind super soul is, is Bhagavan. Behind Paramatma is Bhagavan, and that's Krishna. We really need help for that. But you might speculate that there's something. So this is, this is the process by which, and when we're preaching, we can take people through these different steps and we can explain the next higher step. But to get to these more invisible steps, we have to 
search within ourselves and become convinced of the route we are in, the, in thought so that we can explain it to others. So, um, but, it, but it's there. It's a logical thing. Okay, super soul is in everybody's heart guiding them, but where does super soul come from? Is he just like individualized or something? So like, he comes from the central source because everything works together, everything is beautiful, and what's the source of all of that? So he's, uh, ultimately you come to Bhagavan. But most people can't think that far without some help. So you need some, some uh, help from a spiritual master or from his books, like that. Um, so anyways, as we hear from the spiritual master, as we perform devotional service, as we read Prabhupada's books, at first it's like, like a, a mass of individual data bits, you know? I mean, it's just, you, you can read the English, but, but you know, it's like overwhelming. However, in, in the 10th chapter, Krishna says, I'm within the heart, I shine the lamp of knowledge in the heart and drive away the darkness. So gradually, the lamp is shined on, on all these different pieces of information that we read in different sentences in Prabhupada's books, or different sentences that Prabhupada speaks or the devotees speak, and they come together, and they become spiritualized so that we can understand. And lo and behold, we have some spiritual realization. That's because super souls in the heart, organizing all these thoughts and shining light on them, and they become spiritualized and not just intellectual sentences. So that's how it all works, folks. So I'll stop here. Any questions or discussion? Hopefully. Hopefully that's how it works. We can also choose to not. Listen. I have to go from the so I will speak first. <laughs> oh, go I ahead. Have something to share. <laughs> I happened to be in New Orleans yesterday. I will probably share this again with pictures I took. Um, there is a company called Peroni Brothers. Peroni Brothers. Yeah, and they've been there since 1824. <laughs> that long. But my son has been buying this uh, OV bond, so I wanted to go there. Something is just drawing me to that place. I don't even have to go there. What kind of place is it? It's, it's a, a bakery. It's a bakery. It's a bakery. Yeah, and then and my husband said, I don't want to go there. Is it so far away? No, 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 I have to go there. I just have to go there. So I went in there. This is a true story now. You all have to pay attention, because I'll probably say it again when Google and Jim and Tree Davis. Nobody actually can go inside this place unless you have an appointment. I didn't know that, <laughs> you know, first of all. So I go there and do my drama and be a little speaker. I said, uh, I didn't know that I have to do appointment. I come from Gulfport. My son buys from you. Please let me in. So I have to beg them to let me in. And they're like, okay, there's three people. Now when you walk in this little place, that is, it's a little, but then it's like a big factory in the back that mm -hmm. later I saw. In this little place you walk in, it's like a, what do you call that word? Memo, memorable, memoranda, like you see pictures. Memorabilia. Oh, memorabilia. Yeah, stuff. And I didn't know. I'm just like, I walked in and that's all you see first. And then you see the receptionist in the way back. I, talk, I, I was really wanting to see what this is, but I talked to the receptionist. Then I come out and I'm looking around and I just couldn't figure it out. That is this beautiful model looking picture of a man. And then I see all these family pictures and it's like everywhere. And suddenly I saw in one little corner in a newspaper, it said something about the death of this person. Mm. So that really made me want to ask, you know, who is this? And then I see pictures. It happened to be this big, famous, rich people of New Orleans. There is twins. Mm. There are the twin brother, one of the twin brother died out of a brain tumor in 2013, I think, six years. So I was like, oh my God, it's so devastating to just feel and see like that. So while I was just thinking and talking to the receptionist, the other twin brother heard about me talking about his brother. He ran out and started talking to me. And he was explaining, I, I was crying and he was crying. This is what people do know. He, they, he said, people have no idea and they are identical twins. He said when his fear growing up, he just, I don't know him from Adam. He's just talking to me. You know, that he, he feels, I, he has pain in his eyes. I can still see, it's been six years. The point he was saying is that people don't understand our twins. When the twins depart, they think, they feel, their emotions, it's the same. So if one is gone, how is the other one supposed to live? You know, he was, he was there. 
Yeah, he, he's just like gone. He said when he was growing up, his biggest fear is losing Randy, that boy. Mm -hmm. He feared it all along, and all of a sudden, it just happened, you know? And he's just talking and talking, and I wish I had something. But we became good friends, and then he wrote a book called Twinless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I bought the book. My husband wanted the book. I ran out and asked him, and then we bought, and he, he's explaining, he said he want the world to know as a twin, you know? As an identical twin, if somebody passes, to go on to live anymore, they, he just don't want to live anymore. He, he just can't do it because he thinks and feels and just such good looking people, you know? It's like models out of the book. And they're so filthy rich. They cover the whole metro. For bread. For and, bread. They're the talks since 1984. Big. You know, they're generation to generation. Then he signed the book and I'm going to see him again mm. with the mantra card and buffet and prashada. You know, he still, he still need, he just still in his mind, he said every day it's a struggle. There's such pain, you know. You just, you never know when you go in anywhere. You know, he needed to talk a little bit. You know? mm -hmm. I'll show you the pictures, they were like amazing, you know. Look like really good. Like, especially like when they're identical, when they come from mm -hmm. the same egg. Mm -hmm. They still like that. that. Even one boy was at war and his brother knew he died. Mm -hmm. You could feel it. Yes. So those are souls that were yeah. so close. They're so close, they got put in the same. Yeah, we're talking about that. And, and actually, I was trying to say, he said, their philosophy is like, uh, what do you think, where did you go? He said he went to heaven, so they, they do believe in some soul, you know, going to heaven, mm -hmm. you know. It's such a, you know, the, I could see that pain in his eyes, you know. And, if he feels he went to heaven, he should be happy for him. What, yeah, but you know, it's a difficult thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but when it, That's it, yeah, because That's he said it's just like two bodies, like one soul, like that, you know. He, that book explains more, I was reading a little bit. But we don't have any earthly idea how twins no. are. But that's why he wrote that book to express that this one thought is already gone. Every day to get up to make that day happen is was so hard. Mm -hmm. And these people have money, fame, everything. You know, people, people need desperately need transcendental knowledge. That's right. And they need to understand what the soul is, what the right. body is, yeah. what body is. And he's open, you know. He's open to other things. It's good to use that is a segue, you know, you're wealthy and things like that. Yeah. 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 Sometimes people, well, when, when my dad died, when I was like two years in the movement, and all of a sudden my dad died from a heart attack. And so the devotees were saying, oh, now the family will be all confused. Now is a good time to preach. The devotees were all telling me that. And I went there, no, no. They were all fortifying their sentimental ideas. Yeah. And yeah. so there was nothing I could do. That's, that's almost the worst time. Yeah. I mean, if they agree for a while, that's one thing. But I know, like, one time, um, uh, my daughter's child died. Oh. And I, I said, can we have, like, a little kirtan? And she was just like, ah. <laughs> Don't give me that spiritual stuff. I just lost my channel. Yeah. I saw that yeah. part, too. Mm -hmm. It's not always the proper time place, you know, yeah. when people are mourning and mourning. Yeah. yeah. You gotta, you gotta let them do that. Separation is, is a real feeling. You gotta feel it. Yeah. It, it's already hard when I mean, your loved one is gone. Yeah. But here, I could feel his, I could get close because it's like part of you is right. gone. That's ten times, you know. Yeah. But you know, their the subtle body is separate. They came from, they each have their own subtle body. And they may have an identical, genetically identical gross body that went through the same things right together at the same time. But the some bodies come from, you know, came from the soul from different, they have different histories. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, have, they just got real close, so they got to be twins. But, but they're still two individuals. They just, yeah. He needs you know, to know that somewhat other than to yeah. feel, you know. It's like, it's like conditioning, you know. Conditioned to be so close yeah. to this person, now what? Yeah. In eBay, you can see his book, you know, it's called mm -hmm. Time. A twinless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's five dollars or something. They do studies too with like cells. With what? Cells. Cells. Like cells. They take cells, even like saliva. 
Hmm. And um, like they took it from a chicken and they brought it across the room. And they stimulated the uh, chicken and the cells in, in the uh, peri dish did the same thing. They moved it downstairs, they did the same thing. Wow. So the cellular level is so important. That's why they say like even massage someone's shoulders and the whole body can be relaxed from it because they're all connected. Yeah. You know, so if you're like from the same cell, you're going to feel that vibration. You know, any type of vibrational type of medicine is like that too. And homeopathic medicine, you take it, you put it in there, and you divide it so many times that the only thing that you cannot find any substance that's the same as the herb you use, all you can pick up is vibrational energy wow. and that is what is healing is that vibration so what he's still feeling is that vibrational connection yeah. with he explains spirit. it all other yeah it's it just it's harder so it's already hard as it is yeah. this is harder oh, yeah, I can only imagine. yeah it's like yeah. a husband and wife you know you, you know like that are very close like when i was in grade school well, one of my good friends, his grandmother and grandpa were inseparable. They were just so close. They were well into their 80s, and the grandpa had black hair, naturally black hair. His wife died. The next day, his hair was white. The next day, he died. That's the kind of people, that's the kind of souls that end up as twins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, because they are they die at the same time they're inseparable yeah. and they die at the same time they can't be parted, so they'll end up as twins. Strange, you know. Since I was well wondering, wondering about how close they were. I mean, he explained they were like really cool, cool, cool. But why nothing happened to them, you know? This is not as far. They have separate farm, you know. That you would think that you know he was already feeling this, but then it's a little bit. They, they don't. They're not eternally like. There's no such thing as like, what do you call soulmates. Because we just, you know, temporarily we connect maybe almost on the soul level, but but um, there's no such thing as a soulmate. But twins feel like soulmates, but they have separate histories and separate karma. But then also, this one was married, the red Andy was not married. Mm -hmm. And that's the pain they also have, that you didn't leave any children behind. Mm -hmm. You know, that really bothered. It was only two weeks time they saw it. He had a headache for two weeks, and then it was a brain tumor, and then an operation. And then came back home, infection, just like the cover. And then heart failure. Yeah, heart failure. Same way. Yeah, he came back home without he came back home. And then he started to not feel good, you know. That's the young boy. Yeah, the from who was, yeah. And then the heart, suddenly the heart just Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Same way. We need to have strong ideas of the philosophy to not be not be confused in our philosophy by these by these really strong yeah. feelings and attachments and everything. It's still the same philosophy. Right. Yeah, yeah. just just different times where people have different kinds of attachments and experiences. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point. It's the philosophy that helps direct us. Yeah. In fact, um, when Prabhupada said it in the verse and uh, the personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, is in every living being. Am I in the right one? No, I just used it. She had to go. And the individual soul. And this fact is perceived and hypothesized in our acts of seeing and taking help from the intelligence. And it's that guidance from the super soul, which is intelligence, mm -hmm. that we got it with the philosophy. One is, um, Goku and Ranjana Prabhu mentioned a condition, a mental condition, and I had heard of this 20 years, almost 20 years ago, 25 years ago I heard about this. A person asked the doctor to cut their arm off. It is not their arm. And they are basically, there's separation of this body and the, so they, they were thinking another body, possibly. Wow. 
and they actually wanted to die. This is not my arm, Doc. I don't want this arm on me. It's called a, a, it's called a, a disorder or something. It is a disorder, but it actually may be crossing over from past lives and all this disconnection stuff. And so our philosophy will guide us. You've heard of walk-ins, right? Yeah. It's a walk-in. A walk-in is like... If I'm really materially distressed and I'm retreating so far that I don't want to be here anymore, there could be a subtle being that comes over and they take over. You know? It's, yeah. They just, they walked in, they, I didn't want this body, this mind, you know, I didn't want to run it anymore, so somebody else runs it now. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times, um, more than one entity can even enter like that. But I had a friend that I was in massage school with and she, told me that a psychic told her she was a walk-in. And there was somebody else that was actually the controller of that body. But, um, so anyway, you know, there could be all kinds of mental, you know, conditions that come up like that. In this yeah. material world, it's, it's a scary place. Uh, uh, different kinds of attachments and, and um, how I, yeah. Yeah, I stop ways of attaching. But if we follow and pay attention to the philosophy, then we'll be on safe, safe and higher ground. Faith, philosophy solves it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, this is a. And he was young. He was only twenty something when he died. These are the twins. This twin must be young too. Then. Yeah. Oh, wait. These are the twins. These are the twins. They're identical oh. twins, and this is the one who passed away. Oh. But this is the one I met. But he looks like him now. Oh. I will take a picture of him the next time I go. Wow. We became friends. I need to help that man. That's the reason why I'm in there. Look at the bread. Oh my gosh, yeah. So yeah, it's like really it's famous in New Orleans. These are the twins. Yeah, this is the one who passed away. What is the name? Peroni. Peroni Brothers. How do you spell? P E R O N E. Something like that. Italian. 1824. Oh, yeah, yeah, they do. So these are not twins. This is, these two are twins. These are these are twins. But yeah. but he he looks just like him if you see him in person. We oh. should chant Hare Krishna for him. I'm going to. I told him I'll pray for you. Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare. Maybe with time, you can do yeah. a friendship. You can actually give them some philosophy. Yeah, Krishna put me with him for a reason. You know. yeah. He said, especially yesterday, he just was not feeling really. six years. Wow. You know, and he just runs from somewhere. Somebody, anybody talk about his brother, he'll just come right away. They say. Mm -hmm. I just was curious. I'm just like, what is this? Everything looks so great, and this man's picture is all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, and look how good looking he is. There are several really good looking. It's whole big family, you know. They, they generation, they create a lot of children. Their children take over the business like that. Sure. That's how they do it since 1824. What a wonderful thing, a bakery. Yeah. Yeah, a huge bakery. Yeah, bread tastes out of the world. They're what? The bread is bread. great. It's Bring us I, I just want something. Oh, my gosh. The bread tastes fantastic. Is that like those um, breads that you had? No, no. I'm to make it to go to that, but as, as I said, not, not anybody can go there. Yeah. You have to call and it's, you don't have it's to It's a school. wholesale. It's like a wholesale. It's yeah. like a big, huge factory. It's not like super soft push juice if you got to go there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Something made me go there. I didn't yeah. want to go, but I said I want to have to go. <laughs> super soft. Hare mm -hmm. Krishna. Thank you. Thank you very much.